Let me change this just a little bit okay. um, uh, and, and ask you about the, the mega church because you pastor a mega church, your church 17, 20,000 members. And a lot's been said about the future of the mega church. And, and do you think that the mega church with millennials, with, with streaming, with online, does the mega church have a future 10, 20 years from now? Well, the, the problem with church and mega church and, and what's shifting, what's shifting, one of the things that shifts to maintain mega churches is they move from gospel preaching to positive thinking. Hmm. So positive thinking, Norman Vincent Peale kind of thing. So they just hum, you know, they murmur along about how you ought to think and this is going to happen and all that. But the life of the church today hmm. is going to be based on its community activity. Hmm. Hear me when I tell you, the millennials have, have changed the, the playing field hmm. simply because they have moved from the ethereal, the mystical, the ontological, and they have moved to what's practical. We want to see results. We don't just want to come into a worship session and we extol the virtues of God uh, on the other side. Right, right. What we want to do is see can his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want you to employ us to see about the hungry, see about uh, the uh, criminal justice system, right. to see about the uh, uh, human trafficking. We want to operate in a world where we can count our victories. Mm. Not just have some prophetic word right. with some declaration about something that's going to happen that may or may not happen. Uh, the, 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 the prophet and the healer is in the church. Right. Well, what is he doing in the church? He needs to be in a hospital. Right. Since he's a healer. Right, right. Right? right, right. And, and let's look at the charts after he lays hands. Now, he comes into the church and he calls out a lot of stuff. I mean, if I go in any church and say, oh, uh, and you have to have the voice for it now, the Spirit of the Lord is moving upon me, and, and I, uh, I, I see back pain. Well, all of us got back pain, <laughs> I mean, you know, to some degree. Uh, the, the mega church is, the whole thing is going to shift mm. because now we want to go into the field. And we want to operate, and yes. Do the work. We want to yeah. come here to be stimulated, educated, but now we want to go out and do it. Yeah. So we can count to see. I, many times when I'm dealing with uh, faith-based organizations and they're operating and I call them together, I say, how do you count your results? And how significant are your results? you got 80 kids in here, and still you're telling me there's 300,000 out there in LA, mm. and you only have 80 in here. Now, how successful is that? Mm. And this is what Millennium's looking for. And the X, that's a whole nother group. Right. Because they're scared to death because people are running around shooting in schools and, yeah. and they're coming up in a, in a culture that is just so violent. But the whole point is that the mega church is shifting. People aren't going to be in their big numbers. And it's not simply because of the internet. It's mm. also because they want to see results. Mm. So here's what you and I have to do. We have to reconcile thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven with my kingdom is not of this world. Mm. See, my kingdom of not of this world happens to be more what black people right. project. Because the dominant culture has always used religion to keep people in line. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I said it. So the dominant culture keeps, keeps us in line with religion. Now, I'll give you an example. Give you an example. The shooting in Charleston. If my mama was in prayer meeting, hmm. And somebody walked in there while she's praying to the God of her salvation, totally helpless, totally without malice or forethought, totally pure, 
and somebody shot him, shot her up. And while she's on the cooling board, I'm going to have a hard time walking in and crying, I forgive. Hmm. Now, I may forgive. I may. <laughs> but it's going to take, and you know I'm apostolic, right? Clearly. It's going to take the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary <laughs> riding on the donkey and the rope to get you there. To get me to a place where I can say, I forgive. But the dominant culture has us in such a state of being mm. that, oh, they're so wonderful. They, look how quickly they forgave. In Dallas, the, 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 the woman went into the man's place and right. shot him, shot him yeah. and, and said she didn't know it wasn't her. It was her place. Who doesn't know it's their place? You can close my eyes. I can smell my house. <laughs> and, and, and shot him, and then everybody's hugging her at the end. It, 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 is, it is like, well, like we have received a presentation of God that eliminates our humanity mm. to the point where we're numb to everything. Mm. So we end up singing songs like, you see, the dominant culture, uh, they don't worry about what's happening on earth because they control that. Mm. But for us, That's... we ended up singing, uh, all God's children got shoes. When I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes and walk all go over God's heaven. So we have been taught the hereafter mm. because we have been completely cut out of the here now. Yeah, and we got to change that. Oh, we got to change that. We got to change that. So listen, let, 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 me, let me do this. Um, I'm, I'm going to change gears one more time before, okay. I, before I put you to work. I'm going to put you to work. Oh, Lord. All right? Because um, my, my show is all about inspiration. I'm going to put you okay. to work. There are a lot of pastors who are committing suicide and they're resigning. What is going on with faith leaders and mental health? Well, the, 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 the thing that we don't realize or we don't want to realize, and I think in many instances, one of the problems with the whole church business today is that church people don't want to show humanity, their humanity. Uh, they believe that they walk into the room and immediately upon being delivered, they're healed. Uh, people are delivered from certain things, but that doesn't mean they're healed. To give mm. an example, Israel was delivered from Pharaoh. It was a six-day physical journey from Canaan to Egypt. Why is it taking 40 years? It's taking 40 years because people can be delivered, but they're not healed. Mm. And uh, many times, the person who is making the presentation is as wounded as the people he's talking to mm. because he is not separate and distinct from the pressures of life and the difficulties that life brings. Mm. So I have, I, I have known many men and women who have been hurting and yet still projecting truth to others about healing. I'll give you another example. Uh, many preachers and pastors who have these problems, mm. they study to preach. Mm. They don't study to apply it. Right. The, we study for the presentation. We study right. to present. Not, not to live. Not to yeah. absorb or yeah. imbibe. Yeah. I found that in my own life. Yeah. Uh, when, 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 when I had back surgery, I had prostate cancer, so I had a prostatectomy, and then my mother died all in 2017. That hit me all at once, the boom. Now I found myself sitting around with a pity party, sitting around, solemn, sad, depressed, broken, and then a voice spoke to me. I don't know whether it was God or where it was, but it was a voice. Something spoke to me and said, well, brother preacher, what about all the stuff you told everybody else? Trust the Lord. Lean on God. You know, you've got to have right, the voice. Right, right, right. you got to have the voice. You know, you just, you just can't speak. you got to lay it up. you got to just believe God. It's all in his hands. He's all under control. And so I had to run an appraisal. 
Mm. I, you know, I had to do an analysis of myself. To see whether or not you believe. And I'm saying, yeah. look, man, yeah. uh, you have studied to preach. You have not studied to absorb. Mm. You have not received what you've given. You have gone from your intellect, from your cranium, to their cranium, and none of it ever seeped into your own heart. Okay, I'm going to stop you oh, because 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 I got I got about three minutes and I want to do three something minutes. in particular. All right, you ready? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was watching an interview where Bishop Jakes was talking to someone, mm -hmm. and they gave him titles from Hamilton, the okay. musical, the songs, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked him to do a one-minute sermon on the titles of the songs from Hamilton. Oh, goodness. And I thought, if T.D. Jakes could do it, <laughs> what Noel the, Jones can do it. Well, give me the songs. So these, these are not the titles he did. So these are different. Okay. All right? So these are separate. So all of these titles come from the musical Hamilton. So I'm going to give you the title. You, you, you take a quick text. I know you, you like a runway. I need you to helicopter. <laughs> Shoot from the hip. You ready? Here's the title. I'll try it. You'll be back. Uh, I'll be back no matter how difficult things are in my life, no matter how bad things have become. I realize that I have an inner power that will always cause me to come back. It is not coming from the outside. It is a resilience that's on the inside that has been planted in me, that has been preparing me for the situation that is in front of me. And no matter how difficult it seems and no matter how many people write me off, I will be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do, um, can, can we do two more? I'm in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, history has its eyes on you. History has its eyes on me simply because there are times when God has selected certain people to operate in certain arenas and certain places for the benefit of others. He has never, ever been in a situation where he has not prepared somebody to operate in a space that will bless other people. The fact that I am a giver and the fact that givers are always remembered, takers mm. are forgotten. Mm. History has its eyes on me because God has given me something to give and what I give will always be recorded for generations to come. <laughs> All right, last one. Last one. Last one. Uh, stay alive. It is imperative that you stay alive because whenever there is life, there is hope. And there is an ability for an individual to survive if that individual is a believer. Believers stay alive because they're not just dealing with the present, but they're looking into the future and they're expecting and hoping and they believe that God is going to bring them out of the situation. Stay alive because if you stay alive, there is nothing that you cannot conquer ultimately. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the venerable Bishop Noel Jones.